Good morning, lovelies. I hope you're well. I thought I'd put my face on, have a little chat. Right, um, I've just washed my hair. I have the magical headband that moves backwards by itself. And I thought I'd just put a little bit of makeup on and have a chat with you because it's a blinking miserable day, folks. It's June and it's pouring down. How rude. Um, and I've just put my skincare on and realised that when I filmed my this is everything I'm putting on my skin skincare video I forgot to put the thing that I was putting on my skin which is Derma Individ Derma Visuals OM Rosacea um, Gel Serum because I'd left it on the sink and it wasn't on the skincare tray so I am using that <laughs> And I just thought, oh, I, I'm not, I'm not going to add it in after I'd edited the video and everything. So I am still using that. If anybody suddenly says, oh, she's not featured so and so, so that's the serum, my oil, and my my moisturiser. I've got some bits from W7, which has a sale on at the moment. Um, W7, a great makeup brand. I've had PR from them before, just to be clear. Um, and they do some really good dupes of the high-end palettes. I do find it quite interesting that Revolution, Makeup Revolution, gets a lot of stick for duping um, brands. But you don't see W7 getting a lot of comments about it. And they do, they do a lot of copies. I don't have a problem with dupes. I think if you can bring out products that are accessible across the price range for anybody and everybody, I think it's a great thing. Um, a prime example of a palette I've bought because I wouldn't have put my money into the high-end one is a copy of the Anastasia Beverly Hills. I can't remember which one, but they brought out this and it's basically a copy um, and it costs me about 4 99 in the sale so there's that and I think that's that's great and then life's a peach doesn't smell of it smells of oh gosh the old sort of 1970s plastic toys maybe that's the packaging but this one I'm not sure what it's supposed to be a dupe of um, maybe there's another palette out there but I liked the look of that and then something I've read a lot about a positive um, feedback and this again was in the sale it's princess potion complexion booster and primer um, fast absorbing complexion booster and primer works wonders on bare skin uh, bare skin alone for a radiant complexion or as a perfect base for your favorite foundation it's got hyaluronic acid rosehip oil sweet almond oil aloe vera argan oil grape leaf chamomile um, our formula will enhance and enchant. Oh, shake well. As with most things, oh, tennis elbow, not good. As with most things, I'm getting used to using my left hand. Um, it's worth shaking products because things do sink to the bottom. Every foundation, out of habit, just shake it. So I had those and I just thought I'd have a chat with you they also very kindly sent me some samples of their foundations which is very nice and there's a color here I quite like I'm gonna hold them up for you because everybody sees things very differently and please appreciate that the camera and the lighting is quite I don't think it's going to show them but I often see things and they stand out so those three to me are very yellow but this one has a pink jumping out at me um, so there's that, although I did want to use the new Maybelline Dream Urban Cover full coverage SPF 50. I've done a video with half of it on my face and I had the IT on the other. Um, IT gave better coverage and more glowing finish to the skin, but this lasted better throughout the day. So that's a little bit more feedback for you. Right, done that. So we're going to put some of the Princess Potion on. It's a pipette. Ooh. Oh, well this looks interesting. I'm just going to annoy a few people. Oh, look at that. Just, you know, a few drops. Can you see Betty? There she is. Hmm. And I'm going to press that. Oh, oh my goodness, it smells of sweets. Oh yes. That smells of a bag of sweets, a paper bag. 
Oh, lovely, with sweeties in. You see, it doesn't take much to make me happy. Just press that into the skin. So we've had um, the 75th anniversary of D-Day um, in the UK and around the world. A lot of places were involved, not just us. Um, and I find it very emotional. My mother was brought up um, and my father brought up with people who remembered the First World War and the absolute horror of that and um, Second World War memories. Um, and whenever she talked about it, she'd get so emotional about it. Um, and you can't imagine, because you can't live it yourself, that unless you've been there, what they went through. But the most incredible, I've seen some incredible things. There was an interview with the most wonderful veteran on breakfast television who said he wasn't a hero because he came home, which I thought was, oh gosh. I wish we lived in a world where we had that attitude. I mean, they, the men and women that fought at that time, I don't think I've ever heard anybody complain about it. They did it because they saw it as their duty. They wanted to fight for their country, for freedom, for queen and country, king and country. Um, and it's an incredible, you just can't imagine what they saw, what they went through, and then to come back and to try and live a life they had before because you you can't return to that but the d-day veteran on breakfast television bbc breakfast television that was amazing and then the two gentlemen who um parachuted into normandy oh my goodness that was incredible it was absolutely incredible and they glided in and they were stood it was just amazing it just shows you oh gosh it just shows you the reality of bravery and strength and pride and respect and I had everything um, watching the television for that and I get very emotional about it and we had a parade here because quite a number of American soldiers left here our beach and were some of the first to go to the Utah beach that they called it in Normandy to land in Normandy it was the first beach that the Americans landed on and they actually left from here so there are a number of things around um, where I live and especially on we call it the breakwater there's a plaque and everything because they were around here so it's been quite an emotional time and if you're not moved by it and you don't realize the sacrifices that a lot of people made then you really need to slap yourself quite hard or in fact let me know where you live and I'll come and slap you quite hard anyway but yes very proud and you know we're getting to the stage where there are so few left it's it, you know we really need to be saying thank you because that's not enough but it's something Right, enough of my emotions. That feels quite nice, Princess Potion. Love the smell. It's not overly sticky, it's still going into the skin, but it, it feels really nice. Um, yeah, Princess Potion. Um, let's have a look. I'm going to try the natural beige because that to me was the pinkest. I have a choice of buff, sand beige, fresh beige, a natural beige and I'm gonna give this a whirl that they sent me oh my goodness that's a brilliant tester with a doe for applicator as well brilliant I'm gonna just roll it onto the back of my hand rather than scrape it onto my face oh that's very nice very pinky it is it's pinky told you and then I'm gonna use a blush and bronze nanshai brush but I use it as a foundation brush let's just have a look oh that's nice oh I like that oh 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 <laughs> this looks promising that feels very nice 
I didn't get a lot out but that's pushed into the skin nicely okay let's have a bit more that's lovely very lightweight but the coverage pigments very very nice I do feel that brands do miss out by not offering small testers and I know the cost can be quite a lot um, even just to create testers but I do think they produce sales you know trying this out and just looking at it and it's blended into my skin without any visible signs of brush marks it's a beautiful colour it feels lovely on the skin I mean I haven't used a lot but that's covered the worst side of my face better than some of the high end foundations that I have so from that sample they will probably get another sale which they wouldn't have got if they just sent me the products and plus all the products I bought were just from the sale and a lot of places you get the samples if you're paying full price but that's I'm very very impressed I have never had um, a foundation from W7 I've had other things and I've always rated W7 but of course you move on to other products and things and other brands but yeah I'm just going to put some more on just for the sake of it to be honest but that's natural beige um, if I find out which, unless they've only got one foundation, which foundation that is, I will list it below in the details. That really is pretty flawless. Yeah, I like it. That's good. Okay. Natural beige. The others... I could maybe work with fresh beige because it does have it's not as yellow but the other two just by eye are yeah too yellow definitely um for me especially sand beige which you'd expect but that's years of working on a counter and just looking at lots of foundations and picking out tones not just oh it's yellow but the exact tones and seeing how different they are luckily it's not left me brilliant right I'm going to use some of the Glossier stretch concealer and I'm going to apply that with my fingers but I have to say this foundation is actually I wonder if they do a concealer to match the foundation I'd be interested to know I shall have a look they do a vegan range, um, an exclusively vegan range, but they do charge more for it, which, you know, maybe it does cost more to achieve the vegan standard, but you always seem to be sort of damned if you want something slightly different. Okay, W7, you have put temptation in my way. But this, hmm, yeah, I can see now why people have raved about it. I've got a confession to make. Um, which which palette? Which palette? I'm trying to read your minds. This one. Um, shall I confess to you? Because you know I always tell you everything that I do. I I did have breakfast this morning. Proper breakfast. You know. I actually had toast. Usually I have cereal, but I had toast this morning. So I had proper breakfast, but. I did have second breakfast and I, I had cake. <laughs> shocking. Um, shocking, shocking, Rebecca. I'm going to use Cheers. It's a bit of a safe colour, mink, but you know. Yes, I had cake. It's nobody's birthday, which makes it even more. Actually, it is. Where my husband works, it's their birthday and they had a cake made and they're, they're having a celebration over this weekend and he brought me some of the cake home last night when he'd finished work and it was damn delicious and this morning I was I just couldn't stop thinking about this cake I didn't eat it all I just had a slither um but I kept thinking oh that cake oh that cake was nice and I just thought for goodness sake don't be so ridiculous have it if you want it you know you're a grown-up you're allowed um so I, I've had a slice of cake for second breakfast. Go me. I know. 
there's probably somebody recoiling in horror as they're watching this video. But there you go. Life's too short. Eat the cake. That's nice. That's a matte colour. Um, I haven't primed my eyes. But that's quite a smooth matte as well. Very, very smooth. Pigment's quite nice. I didn't want it to be too strong. I like it. Yes. Oh, so far so good. This is a mixture of, well, it's mainly mattes actually, but there are a couple of satin colours and then you have a couple of shimmer shades as well. So Espresso Martini is shimmer and this stunning Champagne Toast um, has the shimmer, but then you do have satin. So Sugar Ram and Magnum. I'm just trying to see if I can see the sheen on some of them and I think Body Shot. So a nice mix there. Um, they do have talc but a lot of even the high-end ones have talc so it's 14 eyeshadows and then I think yeah it was about 4 99 in the sale so a lot cheaper and I will put the dupe name for the Anastasia Beverly Hills that it is a lot of you are probably shouting at the screen now <sighs> I've forgotten and I don't want to go on Google when I'm filming. You know how it is. Um, I'm going to use some of the Martini Olive. I just fancy that colour. And it comes with a very nice brush. Even better. This dual-ended brush. So flat-headed brush. And then a nice buffing round-headed brush. And I'm going to use some of the Espresso Martini Shimmer, put that just in there, just pull it across. Lovely folk, um, we're watching Sherlock, I may have told you in another video, I forget what I've said sometimes, um, but yes we're watching the Sherlock series is on Netflix. Um, I do like a bit of Sherlock. I think Benedict Cumberbatch is an excellent Sherlock. I really do. I do, I mean, some of you may not remember the TV series with Jeremy Brett. And he was brilliant because he, he was sort of sticking to the books and the original time span and the right era and everything. So I think Jeremy Brett was my favourite Sherlock in that respect. But Benedict Cumberbatch, I just think he is absolutely, he encapsulates all the quirks of, of Sherlock. Craig thinks he's a bit too emotional. He feels Sherlock is very cold. But I think he is emotional. I think that's the fight that he's having. He's a bit Spockish. Um, Sherlock for me having read the books I think he sort of he doesn't want to let anybody in but there is definitely emotion there I love Eunice Stubbs as Mrs Hudson I think that is just sublime casting and Mark Gattis as Mycroft although Mycroft is supposed to be sort of an overweight fighting with his weight plumper gentleman um, more goutish than anything but I do like Mark Gattis however you know there's always somebody that I don't like. You, you kind of got me now. I really struggle with Martin Freeman. Really, really struggle with him. Um, not just in this, in everything. I just don't feel him at all as an actor. There's just something about him that I, I don't know. Um, you know when you just have a vibe about somebody and that's what I get. Um... No. So Martin Freeman as Dr. Watson doesn't really... Just no. But I'm enjoying the Sherlock series again. I'm going to put eyeliner on. Woo! Um, do you remember when I used to do it all the time? Um, DHC eyeliner. This was PR.
I'm going to put something under the eye. Hmm. I'm going to use the flat headed brush and I'm going to use Magnum, which is a darker emerald green. And I'm just going to press that. And then just rub with my finger. Can you hear Betty snoring? So sort of stopping where my pupil's at the centre and then just roughly That's it, roughly blending it in. That'll do, little pig, that'll do. Um, Paradise Primer Ecstatic, I'm suddenly addicted to it again. And it must have some growth serum in it because I've finished all my eyelash serums and potions and things that make them grow. And I started using this because I thought, oh, I want to use it up because I went off it a little bit. And my lashes have been enormous since I've been using it and I've really got quite hooked. I have long lashes anyway, but you know when you're just aware that they're just that little bit more extensive and they don't seem to be falling out as much either. So it must have some sort of conditioning properties. And then I have some of the Lola Volume Mascara. They have some great choices. I like this one because you get a lot of product and you get it loaded in all the places, well, all the places I want it, but then the brush thins out here. So when you're going into the inner corner, you're not transferring um, product. Although if you're like me, you do because you're whacking it on. Um, I'm reading a book by Ernest Borgnine currently, um, an actor I really like, um, liked, he's passed away now very much. Um, he writes beautifully, it just flows and he's obviously got quite a sense of humour. He's always, he's got quite a hard, tough face and he was in From Here to Eternity, Marty. He was also in the musical Best Things in Life Are Free, which I really loved. Um, it had Gordon McRae, Dan Daly love Dan Daly. You've probably no idea who I'm talking about. Do look them up. It's worth it. Gordon McRae had the most incredible voice. But Ernest Borgnine, Ernest Borgnine is so unlikely for a musical, but yeah, he fits it perfectly. And I'm reading his autobiography. And his last wife is the beauty lady, Tova, who sells a lot of her products on QVC, for those of you that like beauty. He was married to Ethel Merman, and some of the things I've read that they said about each other, it wasn't a long marriage. The things they said about each other and the words they called each other, the names they called each other. Um, it's, yeah, if you're offended, don't look it up. But they didn't have a good word to say about each other. But yeah, it, it's quite amusing to be honest. So I'm reading that currently. I'm really enjoying it. I love you know actors and actresses that kind of thing and that era that he was in and he comes across as a nice chap as well very down to earth very appreciative of where his career took him and everything so yeah um i like it i'm gonna use some of the glossier cloud paint in dawn which is sort of a coppery burnt orange color but because my eyes are sort of green i just feel that would work quite well and then I'm going to add a little beam as well which is um, on the same sort of tone so it's got a coral tone to it so they should sort of blend in together and then I want a little brush I'm just going to pop them on blend the two on my hand And then get the sponge and just blend that out. So yes, I'm reading that. Um, I finished reading Ruth Hogan, um, her third 
book that's out. She's probably my favourite author. Um, just something about what she writes and how she writes really fits with my imagination. And I just find her books an absolute joy. And I read them so quickly that I, I'm disappointed because I've finished them. And I did tweet her and say, no pressure, but I've left a space in my bookcase for your fourth book. And she did reply very kindly. She's very, very kind at replying um, and said, I'm working on it. So if any of you are fans, there is a fourth Ruth Hogan book coming along at some point. But I just love her characters, her imagination. She's just eccentrically quirky, and that's my cup of tea, most definitely. Um, yeah, so I finished that one. I will feature the books in June Favourites, because I know a lot of you like to see what I'm reading and have a fuller review, so I, I will show them then, but uh, I just wanted you to catch up. Right, that's quite nice. Lips, what are we going to put on the lips? What are we going to put on the lips? I'm so desperately need to stop using the MUA lipstick I got because Hot Coral, that's all I have been putting on. I know, she says. I have some of the Art Deco lip balm, which alters the colour of your lips, but I'm going to put that on first. Just on the inside. And then I have MAC um, Lip Pencil in Lasting Sensation, which is a corally pink red. Mm. So a glossier finish, it's diluting the colour which is what I wanted. Mm. Right, that's all folks. I'm very, very happy. I love the foundation. I mean, I really love the foundation. That was the W7 one. Really like the Primer Potion, the Princess Potion seems to work. And yes, a nice palette. I will do something very serious and scary with this palette because the colours are really shouting out for... I mean, look at that. Oh, look at that lovely sort of burgundy shade. Last call. They're really asking for something serious, so I will. And then Life's a Peach, I feel, will be this sort of summery palette. I love that pure pleasure colour. Um, oh, just put my finger in it. Yes, I like... I like that. They do have a dupe for the Urban Decay Cherry Palette. I was looking at that the other day, so that may appear at some point, but I think that's enough to keep us going for now. Right, I'm off to Ra for now, and I'm gonna take this off because, yeah, it was here, and now it's here. Headband issues. Bye for now.